Look at our shirts. They're facing each other. Make the Pennywise's kiss. Kiss me, fat boy. I think you know what movie we're going to be talking about. It. And the miniseries. I'm Danny Nightmare. I'm Gory B. Movie. And we're Horror Addicts. And today we're going to be talking about who wore it better, the actor from the miniseries or the actor from the new movie. We're basically going to be pitting children against each other like they're Pokemon. Well, no, we're just going to be comparing the roles and saying who we thought was better. So for each of these characters, we'll be seeing either 1990, referring to the miniseries, or 2017, referring to the new movie, for our picks on who wore it better. And ladies first, Beverly. Beverly in the 1990 miniseries and Beverly in the new movie are so very different. And I like the changes they made. I'd find the Beverly in the book somewhere in between, but leaning more in towards the miniseries. However, I'm going to go with the 2017. Sophia Lillis. And yes, I had to look that name up. I think she did a great job, except for the whole cliche haircutting scene. But I can't blame her for that. That's just the movie's plot. She was a total badass, ready to really throw in there and fight Pennywise. And I liked that. I love how she's this cool tomboy who can really hold her own with the boys, but at the end of the day, I love our sweet Beverly from the 1991, played by Emily Perkins, who we also know from the Ginger Snaps franchise, just a tad more. So as much as I love the new girl who played her in the 2017 film, I'm gonna have to say 1990 Beverly. Next up, Bill Denborough. Now, Bill was played by Jonathan Brandis in the 1990 miniseries and Jaden Lieberer in the new movie. Now, this one was really hard for me because I think the kid in the miniseries really did a great job, and I liked that kid. He was in Ladybugs and a bunch of other weird things, Sequest. He's a great actor. The other thing about Bill is he's the leader of the losers, and I do feel that Jonathan Brandis did a better job of showing that leadership role when he portrayed the character. But I think the one in the new movie actually kind captures the way I pictured Bill a little more in my head. I got all the feels for Jaden's portrayal in the new movie. This character really pulls at your heartstrings and gets you invested in this film. I'm gonna have to go with Jaden in the 2017 film. I'm going with Jaden in 2017 as well. That line where he talks about it's easier to go into this house than his own, it just sold me on him. Yes. He gave a really powerful performance and I felt like he was the heart of this movie. Yeah. That's why I'm going with him as well. So what about Ben Hanscom? Now in the novel, the kids refer to them as Big Bill and Big Ben. They're the two leader characters in the Losers Club. Ben has this very commanding role. He's the one who teaches them how to build a dam, and he's the one that a lot of them look towards for guidance. Now in both the novel and the miniseries, Ben is a taller kid. He's kind of actually a threat to Henry, and that's kind of why Henry hates him so much. Richie even gives him the nickname Haystack, which is based off the old pro wrestler called Haystack Calhoun, but that would be a 50s reference, and there's no way they're gonna call the new Ben Haystack Calhoun in the 80s because that doesn't make any sense. Now, the reason we bring this up is because Brandon Crane certainly looks the part as it was described in the book more than Jeremy Ray Taylor did in the new movie. I'd have to say new Ben is adorable. He is so cute. I just want to <laughs> squeeze those little cheeks. And when I first saw him on screen, I thought he might be a little too young looking, a little too cute to play Ben. But the moment he delivers that first line to Beverly, the new kids in the block line, I was sold. Please don't go, girl. That's that's the name of another new kids on the block. Sorry. So despite the discrepancies, I have to say Jeremy Ray Taylor nailed it. I loved his portrayal and he is my pick. I liked him and that whole new kid scene was adorable and just fun. But I am going to go with the miniseries because I liked Ben who actually bested Henry a couple of times physically. And I liked how strong he was in that way. So that's just the way I'm going. But I the new one was great too. It was, it was a hard decision to make. I just want to adopt him. He was so cute. <laughs> So next up is Richie Tozer, a.k.a. Trash Mouth, or the comic relief of the group. Now, Seth Green played him in the miniseries. I'm a huge Seth Green fan. He's an awesome actor. However, I just don't think that he was written that well in the miniseries. No, I mean, Richie's supposed to be funny. And as much as I love Seth Green, his character never made me laugh in the miniseries, whereas Finn Wolfhard's portrayal of Richie in the new movie had me rolling in the aisles. He was hilarious. Yes. I believe that the TV studios probably really watered down Richie for the miniseries. They couldn't 
express what, you know, Stephen King is going to make these kids say. Well, yeah, Richie's called trash mouth because he swears a lot. <laughs> and he's got some pretty perverted thoughts that he does not mind expressing. And seeing how uh, Finn was able to be a little more off the chain with that, I would have to say definitely him. Barnon Finn Wolfhard nailed it. Between Stranger Things and it, though, I can't wait to see what else that kid's going to be in. Yeah, this kid is really talented and I see a big future for him. In fact, I'm a little sad that we're not going to get a see him in chapter two. Yeah. <laughs> maybe there'll be a flashback or something. That'd be awesome. And yeah, maybe the kids will come back for a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. However, in this movie, I think Eddie really gave Richie a run for his money. I know. I was so surprised by that. He's such a feisty little guy. I'd say he's a little more feisty in that even than he was in the book. However, I'd say he's also pretty true to the how he was in the book as well. Yeah, he's a small kid, so he fits the character. And he's, you know, a little prissy, a little overly mothered. So in the 1990 miniseries he was played by Adam Frazel and in the new movie he's played by Jack Dylan Grazer. I think they both did a great job. However, I feel like Eddie in the miniseries didn't have a whole lot to do other than being awkwardly cornered in the shower by Pennywise. Yeah, what was up with that? Pennywise comes out of the drain in the boy's shower. Eddie's having an asthma attack, <laughs> and then they cut to a commercial. What happened? He didn't kill him. So what, did he just stare at this kid in his towel? I don't know. He just kind of looked at him, and <laughs> they went to a different scene, and it's like, yeah. why not just eat him? <laughs> Way to be a perv, Pennywise. Maybe someone else came into the shower, and he didn't want that type of heat. Like, oh. <laughs> so he was kind of a throwaway character. I mean, he does have his really cool scene where he melts Tim Curry's face with his uh, inhaler, his battery acid, but that's about all he really does that kind of stands out. Whereas in the new movie, Eddie really gives Richie a run for his money in the comedy department. This kid is hilarious. One of my favorite parts is when he's confronting his mother. He realizes that he's been taking placebos and he's like, and I don't need these gazebos. <laughs> that's awesome. It's not what a gazebo is, kid, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had me cracking up the whole time. Him and Richie, just both of them. I also like that they really expanded on Eddie's fears in the new movie. Eddie is afraid of germs and disease. His mother's got him completely paranoid. And in the new movie, we see that he's traumatized by this disease-ridden hobo that comes out of the house on Kneebolt Street. This is something directly from the book. Yeah, the leper is a lot more creepy than just stretched out shower heads. But this kid was just feisty as all hell, and I loved him. So for me, I'm gonna have to go with Jack's performance in the new movie. Me too. I'm gonna give it to him and bolt his fanny packs. <laughs> <laughs> Two fanny packs. So let's talk about Stan Uris. In the miniseries, they made him a Boy Scout, and I kind of like that. It really added depth to why he was a bird watcher, and when he would say the birds' names, that gave him strength. Now that's something that we saw in the miniseries and the book, but we didn't see that in the new movie. Another thing about Stan is they say in the book that Stan's actually a really cool guy. He's athletic. He probably could have even been popular if it weren't for the fact that he's Jewish, and this is the 1950s, and there's a lot of prejudice. And even though there might not be as much of that in the 80s, people like Henry will still grab his yarmulke and throw it like a frisbee. Oh yeah, Henry's the kind of kid who will prey upon anything that makes you different. One of the things I did like about Stan in the miniseries is he has this thing he does when he's stressed where he holds on to his ear and we see that he does that even when he's an adult. And I thought that was a really interesting thing to add to the character. However, watching the 1990 miniseries, Stan doesn't get a lot of screen time as a kid. And honestly, they don't even really cover his Jewish heritage much, which is a big part of this character. Another thing that's really important to remember about Stan is he's very rooted in reality. In fact, in the book, when Stan discovers that Pennywise is real, it says that he is offended by this. The idea of anything supernatural completely changes the world and makes it a much scarier place for him. They added a few things. Stan is the rabbi's son in this, so we see a lot more of Stan struggling with this idea of faith. This is really important to the character because Stan's struggles with faith directly relate to his struggles to believe in the supernatural, and this is what ultimately leads to him killing himself in chapter two. Now, even though I do prefer the miniseries Stan, I have to admit the things they do to scare him, what Pennywise does to interact with him, is a lot creepier in the movie. Yeah, in the new movie, there's this creepy painting in Stan's father's office. It's like a woman and her head's all wonkified. Playing the flute, but it reminds me a lot of the Scream painting, and it comes to life. And if you've ever been a kid that was afraid of a painting or a poster, you can really relate to it. <laughs> 
I absolutely can. When I was a little kid, my parents hung this poster of Christine in the hallway that led to my bedroom. And I remember doing the exact same thing as Stan, covering the side of my face when I went by it or just running past it so I wouldn't have to look at it. So this was something I really related to. And my family has an infamous clown painting <laughs> that they pass on and give to each other every year and it scares the crap out of them. There'll be more videos on that later. So for me, 2017 Stan. And for me, miniseries Stan, but just barely. And the last kid to join the Losers Club, making them the lucky seven, is Mike Hanlon. Now in the book, there is this apocalyptic rock fight, and that's how the Losers Club meet Mike. In both the miniseries and the new movie, that is how they meet him as well. But I have to say, in the new movie, it's a lot more epic of a fight. <laughs> and it had metal playing! It was amazing. I love that scene in the new film. I haven't heard Anvil in forever, but that was a great time to hear it. <laughs> so I'm going to have to choose Mike from the miniseries on my pick. He was a little more of a nerd and they gave a lot of his part away in the new movie to Ben. Mike is sadly, as a child, the least developed of the kids in both the miniseries and the new movie. So hacking off part of his role and giving it away was not a good call. I have to agree. Um, what we know about Mike from the miniseries and certainly more in the book is Mike is very interested in history. It's really great in the book because his father sends him on these scavenger hunts. His dad doesn't have time to take him because they work on a farm, but he'll tell Mike to go check out the old ironworks and stuff. And this is something that fascinates Mike. We've seen the miniseries, him giving this report. He's also the one that tells the losers about the history of the children dying in Derry, Maine. But in the new film, Mike's parents are dead. And all we really know about Mike is that he works on a farm. What draws Mike to the Losers Club is a couple of things. One, he's one of the only black kids in town, which is particularly hard since this is set in the 1950s in the miniseries and in the book. He also lives on a farm that is down the street from Henry Bowers' farm. And even though the miniseries just barely touches on his feud with Henry's family, it's still there while in the new movie, it's like completely gone. These farms are competitive against each other and also Bowers and his father are extremely racist. So they have a hate on for the whole Hanlon family to the point that they kill all the family's chickens, and Henry even kills Mike's dog in the book. And even though it's not a lot, I get some of that Mike in the miniseries, while we get a completely different Mike in the new movie. For me, the 1990s version is also a little more how I pictured Mike reading the book. He's a very intelligent, introverted kid, and I thought that the kid who played him in the miniseries pulled it off just a little bit better. Now jumping to the other side of that feud, we have Henry Bowers. First off, I gotta say, I really dig the changes they made to Henry in the new movie. The kid portion in the book and the miniseries is set in the 1950s, so Henry is a greaser kid, which is what these stereotypically bad boys were back in the 50s. But in the 80s, he's got this rockin' mullet. Business in front, party in the back. <laughs> In the miniseries, he was more of a cliche, just kind of your typical greaser. There was no real dimension to him. He just was a dick. And being a greaser in the book was fine because Stephen King had chapters and chapters to show all the individual hate that he had for the Losers Club. But the miniseries really couldn't capitalize on that. They didn't have the time to show you why he hated everybody so much. So it was very flat. Yeah, I have to agree. The 2017 version of this character is so much more of a well-rounded character. Now, I don't think the kid who played him in the miniseries did a bad job at all, but I have to say the kid who played him in the 2017 film scared the shit out of me. He is the perfect instrument of destruction for Pennywise. Yeah, there is a scene with Henry towards the end of this film involving a television set and Henry's dad that chills me to the bone. So for me, no contest. Henry in the 2017 movie is my pick. Definitely. And last but certainly not least is Pennywise, played by Tim Curry in the 1990 miniseries and Bill Skarsgård in the 2017 film. Now this is a tough one. I mean, they've all been hard to choose from, but this one is really tough because they are such different, but scary ass characters. Tim Curry's character berates, teases, and seems to mock his victims. In a lot of ways, he seems more human, like the kind of clown that you would see at a circus, but with this real mean streak to him. Why does he have to be so mean? <laughs> 
Whereas Bill Skarsgård has this kind of animalism to him. He seems more bestial than human. And for me, he was the scarier of the two. I think in a sense he is. And I loved how he had to smell Beverly to prove that she's not afraid of him. He had to smell for fear. That's not a human characteristic by any means. Yeah, he's, he's like an animal and he seems to not even fully understand how humans work. I mean, you have to think about how this character is a creature that resurfaces every 27 years. So his knowledge of humans is very sporadic. And Pennywise is choosing this form, but you can see how his lack of knowledge makes it so bizarre. Pennywise's eyes don't even seem to really focus straight forward. Like they're not even there other than for decoration almost. Yeah. It's all a costume, and that is so much more apparent with Skarsgård's performance. However, I'm gonna have to go with Curry because it's such an iconic character. Plus, the fact that he is more human, I think makes him more evil. Because he seems to really know more what he's doing, while Squizgar's care. Squ Squizgar? <laughs> no, that's from Metal Alphabet. What's his last name? <laughs> Skarsgård. Skarsgård. <laughs> he uh, isn't out just for the meal. He is really out to just mess with these kids. One of the things I do have to say is as scary for me as Skarsgård is in the new film, I don't think it can be attributed to the actor alone. It's the costume, it's the makeup, it's the CGI enhancements, it's the sound. There's a collaborative effort that has gone into making this monster. Whereas Tim Curry's performance is largely what makes Pennywise so terrifying in the 1990 miniseries. So at the end of the day, even though I have to say that Skarsgård scared me more, I think Tim Curry gave more of a performance. I think the story and the production of the new movie really let Skarsgård be just off the wall crazy and scary, and I love that. Curry was um, kind of hindered with a TV movie with a very low budget, but he did so much despite that, that I really have to give it to him. I mean, even just look at Tim Curry's costume, there's nothing scary about how Pennywise looks in that movie. He could be a clown at any circus. What made that character scary is the way Curry portrayed him. Whereas you look at Skarsgård, I am sorry, but there is no way in hell I am reaching down into any gutter that he's in. He just looks terrifying even when he's not trying to be. Still, this is very close. Skarsgård brought so much to the role that I loved. I loved the drooling that he's constantly doing when he's speaking to the kids. Like, he's trying so hard to either lure them in or scare them, but this hunger that he has for them is just overtaking him. Again, so animal. Very animal. He can't keep himself composed, while Curry knows exactly what he's doing, and he's always in control of the situation in a sense. So yeah, I love both of these adaptations for completely different reasons. But when it comes to picking a performance, I have to say that Tim Curry made what could have just been a throwaway TV villain into something that is still scaring audiences to this day. So I've got to give it to Curry. I mean, he was like basically Freddy Krueger. So it's exciting to know that we're going to see a lot more Pennywise in our future. I, for one, am stoked for chapter two. So let us know who you thought wore it better in the comments. And share what you thought of our picks. Did we get it right? Let us know. Thanks for watching. And in the new movie, we see that he's traumatized by this disease-ridden homo... homo. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> And even though there might not be as much of that in the 80s, there's people like Henry who will grab his yarmulke and throw it like a hammock. It's a hammock. <laughs> Whoa, I don't know where you got that. <laughs> hammock. <laughs> oh, Prisby. Well, at least it wasn't a diseased home. <laughs> <laughs> you got a good point there. Cut. <laughs>